Hello everyone, this is your host Urvashi Chahan. Welcome to Quotes Today by Live Law, your one-step destination to all legal developments in the country. Let us start. Starting with an update on the water crisis in Delhi due to the major heat wave across North India. In a major relief to the residents of Delhi, the Supreme Court today directed the government of Haryana to facilitate uninterrupted flow of surplus water released by the state of Himachal Pradesh government for Delhi to resolve the water crisis being faced by the residents. The bench comprising Justices P.K. Mishra and K.V. Vishwanathan directed the Himachal Pradesh government to transfer 137 Cossacks of water from upstream so that the water reaches the Hitani Kund barrage in Haryana, whereby the Haryana would facilitate the transfer of water to Delhi through Wazirabad barrage in Delhi. The Delhi government has filed a writ petition seeking immediate directions for Haryana to release water to the capital, citing an acute shortage. Delhi, as a lower riparian territory, needs additional water because of the dry summer, but Haryana has yet to comply with the request. The petition also sought cooperation in releasing surplus water agreed upon by Himachal Pradesh. The matter is next listed to 10th June with a direction to the state of Himachal Pradesh to release the water tomorrow with prior intimation to Haryana, which shall measure the water for onward supply to Delhi. The Juvenile Justice Board Pune today extended the remand of a teen accused of driving the Porsche car involved in a collision which caused the death of two engineers to observation home till 12th June. Further, a Pune court today sent the parents of the accused to police custody till 10th June on allegation of manipulating the blood sample of the minor accused on the night of the accident. You are aware that a 17-year-old son of a prominent Pune builder allegedly driving a Porsche Taycan under the influence of alcohol lost control and hit a motorcycle in Kalyani Nagar, resulting in two fatalities. The car lacked number plates and the group had consumed alcohol before the accident. Initially granted bail by the Juvenile Justice Board on the same day, the minor was later remanded to an observation home until 5th June. The board has also rejected the plea to try him as an adult. Also, the court earlier sent the father and grandfather of the minor to judicial custody for allegedly pressurizing their driver to take the blame for the accident and wrongfully confining him in their house. Madhya Pradesh High Court has rejected a plea for medical termination of pregnancy when the victim's mother in the matter conceded that they did not intend to prosecute the accused relative. The single judge bench of Justice Gurpal Singh Aluwalia also observed that the real intention of the prosecutrix and her petitioner mother was evident from the petitioner's admission that they would not support the prosecution case at the trial. The accused in this case is a son-in-law of the petitioner who allegedly took away his younger sister-in-law and impregnated her. In April this year, after going through the case diary, the court instructed the petitioner's counsel to file an affidavit of the petitioner and her husband to the effect that they would not turn hostile at the trial of the accused. After the petitioner filed an affidavit, the court inquired the petitioner about the relationship with the accused at this juncture. The mother replied that they would make every attempt to save the accused relative in the trial. The court refused to allow termination of pregnancy. It observed that its concern was not whether the petitioner wanted to ensure her son-in-law's conviction, but whether the court was being used to get rid of an unwanted child and then claim no offence occurred. The court firmly said that no one could use the court to play hide-and-seek in committing the murder of an unborn child. The Karnataka High Court has allowed a petition filed by a wife seeking parole leave for her husband who is a life convict on the ground that she is deprived of her right of progeny. A single judge bench of Justice S.R. Krishna Kumar allowed the petition of the woman in part and granted general parole for a period of 30 days to the convict. The husband, convicted under various provisions of IPC, served five years and one month in prison and was granted a 15-day parole in April 2023, during which he married the petitioner. In her petition, she argued that she lives alone with her ailing mother-in-law and is deprived of her right to have children. Allowing the petition, the court directed that the convict shall mark his attendance in the jurisdictional police station weekly once throughout the period of his parole, that is from 5th June to 7th July. The Kerala High Court has reserved for orders the appeal moved by Moini Attam performer Kala Mandalam Satyabhama against the dismissal of her anticipatory bail application by the Special Court for Trial of Offences under SCST Act. 
she has been accused of allegedly making casteist remarks against fellow artist dr r l v ramkrishnan a case was registered against her by ramkrishnan under section 3 of scheduled caste scheduled tribe prevention of atrocities act the council for satyabhama contended that section 3 would not be attracted to the facts of the present case since no name or caste was mentioned it was stated that individuals have different perceptions and she was stating only her opinion about the dance form the counsel for the complainant argued that satyabhama made the allegations with complete awareness that he belonged to scheduled caste community it was stated that her intention was to insult and humiliate the complainant justice k babu stated that the terms used by satyabhama would evidently infer that she wanted to insult the complainant for belonging to a particular community it stated that comments regarding the skin color of a person was indirectly a reference to the community that he belonged to the court orally stated that since the appellant is a lady it would not direct her to appear before the investigating officer the matter has been reserved for others tomorrow you must have come across sign boards with stark warnings like trespassers will be shot these are generally found outside air force base or army area the allahabad high court has taken note of these intimidating messages the court deemed such harsh warnings as improper and recommended that the central government adopt lighter words to convey strict warnings the court's suggestion aims to ensure that the seriousness of the message is maintained without resorting to extreme language fostering a more civil and lawful approach to communication around military installations A bench of Justice Shekhar Kumar Yadav granted bail to a Nepali citizen who had been accused of illegally entering Air Force Station in Prayagraj in an intoxicated condition in February this year. It was his case that he entered the Air Force Station without any ill intention. During the hearing of the case, the court sought to know from the central government the requirement for putting up such sign boards having a detrimental effect on passers-by, especially children. The bench said that while it is true that trespassers are not allowed to enter the premises of the armed forces for the purpose of security, such messages or words have a detrimental impact on children. So the central government may take caution in writing these types of words. Also, the court, after perusing the record of the case, particularly seeing that the applicant was illiterate, belonged to Nepal, and had proper citizenship, granted him bail. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in stay ahead with quick legal updates only on live law do not forget to like share and subscribe and support us you can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month